Marine Corps films of the advance north on Okinawa. Units of the 1st and 3rd Marine Divisions, after landing on the southwest coast of the island with the 24th Army Corps, move ahead against light enemy resistance. Flushing Jap civilians out of hillside caves. Smoke bombs are used to drive out women and children who've taken refuge in these natural shelters. Children and old people comprise most of the civilians on Okinawa, the younger males having been drafted into the Japanese army. Civilians are taken to relocation camps from which they are transferred by AMG officials to undestroyed villages or returned to their farms and homes. Tanks carrying Marines move forward on a mountain road to seize a native village. Vehicles ford streams whose bridges have been destroyed by bombing. Heavy shelling softens up enemy positions in the rugged countryside of Motobu Peninsula. The village is set afire as our troops push ahead. Main Jap resistance is concentrated in three pockets in the hills south of the Mana River. Amtrak's blast Japs entrenched in the hillsides and on ridges. Japs are destroyed in a cave. Enemy fire killed seven Marines before this position was knocked out. One of the few survivors of the demolition assault comes out of the cave to give himself up. The prisoner is ordered to remove his clothes. First aid is given the prisoner. Approximately 350 Japs are killed in the northern Okinawa mop-up. Enemy forces in the Motobu Peninsula area, numbering over a thousand army and navy personnel, are destroyed and all organized resistance crushed by 21st April. Navy films of land-based Jap planes attempting to silence U.S. fleet bombardment of Okinawa in late April. A Jap plane and a low-level attack. makes a forced landing in the water. The damaged plane coming in for a landing gets out of control. F-6F 
after the pilot is safely removed, the fire is extinguished. Our ACAC barrage brackets the Jap plane and knocks it down. Dawn on 26th March, 300 Japanese staged a surprise attack on several CB areas located midway along the west shore of Iwo Jima. Where the Japs came from was not known. Many wore GI equipment and carried American-made guns. Using infiltration tactics, they approached our tents in the dark, knifed a number of the guards and were preparing to attack several of the units simultaneously when a sentry opened fire. As the men rushed out of their tents, some of the Japs maintained fire from behind cover. Others stormed the tents, ripping them open to toss in grenades or entering swords in hand. Two hours later, all 300 of the Japs were dead. Marines used Tommy guns, grenades and flamethrowers to wipe them out. Our casualties amounted to approximately 100 including a number of newly arrived pilots spending their third night on EO. An LCM equipped with diesel oil pump and fuel tanks anchors on the south side of Caballo Island in Manila Bay as the 113th Battalion engineers lay a pipeline up one of the Caballo Hills. Object of the operation is to pump oil into hillside pits and burn out the enemy who has resisted all efforts to be dislodged. Engineers fasten the pipe sections together. Although the small island was captured by elements of the 38th Division, remaining Japs concentrate in hill tunnels for a last ditch defense. In less than three hours, engineers have the entire pipeline in place. On signal, 2,400 gallons of diesel oil and gasoline mixture are pumped into the pit. The mixture is ignited by WP and HE 81 millimeter mortar shells. Fire burns for some time and sets off huge explosions of black powder and picric acid charges, which the Japs had stored in the underground fortress. A Jap comes out of the pit and is captured by one of our patrols. The prisoner burned in the fire is brought in for questioning. The operation continues until it's certain that all Japs holed up in the hill pits have been burned out. A similar action takes place on Fort Drum, El Fraley Island in Manila Bay and LSM and LCM carrying infantry and engineer platoons of the 38th Division head for El Fraley Island to burn out Japs holed up in the reinforced concrete fortress. Troops move quickly down the LSM specially constructed ramp onto the deck of Fort Drum. The men spread out to destroy any Japs who might fire on the platoon from concealed positions. Troops of the 113th Engineering Battalion pull the hose line from the LCM up over the pitted sides of the island fort, which is built like a concrete battleship with gun turrets on the bow and the midship. The nozzle of the hose is placed in one of the vent openings on the deck and the oil and gasoline mixture is pumped into the vent. With slow burning fuse attached, white phosphorus grenades are lowered. 600 pounds of TNT charges are placed in another vent. Troops stand guard over the operation. The engineers set off the 30-minute time fuse and our troops quickly leave Fort Drum's deck. 
approximately 3,200 gallons of fuel oil and gasoline are pumped into the ventilator shaft. The first explosion is caused by the white phosphorus grenades followed by the powerful TNT charge. Smoke pours forth from holes in the top side of the fort. Sections of concrete are blown loose and reinforcing rods are tossed skyward by the terrific force of the blasts. The island had been used by the Japs to report ship movements in Manila Bay. <laughs> 